Hello, this is a continuation of a 3D mesh editing tutorial for Mesh to HRDF. In this video, we will use Blender to correctly position the head and fix all the remaining surface issues. We're gonna use our example file. I'm going into Tools and here is my examples file. So I double click to open it in Blender. That's what the example file looks like different shortcuts and here we go import PLY and where did I save it saved it here complete head import this importing step is actually part of the next tutorial but because I need to use Blender for the final stages of a cleanup, which you could as well do in Mesh Mixer, for example, I will do the importing right now. It takes a while because the file is very big. In fact, it is 5,383,000 triangles big. I think we can close MeshLab. We will no longer need it. We wait for Blender to load a big file. Here it is. I will save a file. And give it a new name. Actually, when you save a file, it's good to go into settings and select compress that saves a lot on the file size. And you can see that the head is somewhere down there. Just selecting it in the list or here does the trick. So now we need to rotate it. You can rotate it by using this menu, for example. Get approximate angle. I see I need this one and I type in 90. I got it there. Then I need to rotate it on another axis, not on this one. Undo. This is good. Direction is good. So I need minus 90 degrees here to get my initial alignment. You can again use the numpad numbers to change view. And you see why we needed this example file, because it shows us example of how the head should be aligned. So in the side view, you can press G to grab and locate somewhere around here. And we can go to the numpad three for front view. Okay, what we see here is that we are roughly where we need to be. Now I can hide the reference. And uh, I need to rotate it correctly. So for this, I'm gonna take a top view, press R to rotate. If it rotates around strange axis, it's quite easy to fix. I'm just gonna use Shift A, no, Control A to apply all transforms. Now it rotates around the world center. So G to grab, got it like this. Okay, let's assume it's good enough. It's aligned forward middle mouse to rotate one so now what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to get it straightened out okay i don't really like how it's looking i'm gonna rotate it here a bit let's say it's correct g to grab we want to get the ear canal at the center. I use Shift Z to switch from solid to wireframe. So this side is good. Control 1 to look at the other side. Looks good. So this is the initial alignment. Again, this is actually part of the next tutorial, but um, I think it's going to be easier to work when it's already in place. Now let's say what we've got. 
in the tutorial it says that what we want to do is we want to check the ear canal and we want to get rid of the hair and of course all the hats and everything else we added so let's first look at the ear as you can see that this is a dummy so the ear canal here is actually a microphone but uh, we can pretend that we want to have an earplug here anyway because when you're gonna scan real people there will be some kind of hole there and to do this I'm gonna go to plus sculpting add sculpting page we had the right object selected so it's now in sculpting mode let's zoom out a bit I don't know much about sculpting myself but I can get what we need done so to demonstrate how would you how to clean up the ear canal I will use mask tool shift left uh, shift middle mouse to pan and now I'm gonna I'm gonna try to okay strength to the max you can use F to scale the tool so now I'm gonna mask the area around the ear canal which I want to keep something like this and it's control to deselect yes so we want what we want to do is we want to mask the area which we don't want to deform at all and then use the for example draw tool to push out whatever is in there to just build up the surface towards us and what we are building right now is we are building an earplug remember I'm just simulating how you would do it on a human for this camera dummy this is not the correct thing to do press shift you are smoothing this so we first build it up closer to us and now I'm smoothing it out and if you do it well enough if it looks like too much you can press ctrl to make a hole there again and smooth it out so let's assume this is how our earplug should look like okay it doesn't look that nice so again I'm gonna build it up and shift to smooth it out build it up smooth it out hmm I might have created a problem there let's take a grab tool and pull it out like this okay I'm just doing this so that there is no weird holes forming there shift to smooth out okay let's say this is good enough here is something which could also be sculpted slightly better it's a bit of a question do you want to experiment crease tool for example is a crease tool you can try to make this crease more pronounced or in other ways try to correct some of the deficiencies of a scan here as well we have a place where we could use either crease tool or the same draw if you press ctrl it will push it in but as you can see as soon as you start messing here you may be damaging it more than you are improving things so I'll be very gentle there and just look at the other ear canal so again this is actually a microphone area in a dummy 
but we are going to mask things around. And hopefully I can get it nicely extruded right now. Unless you use an actual earplug while you're doing a scan, you will have to do this step, no matter what kind of scanner do you have. So again, I'm going to take draw tool and try to get a good view and pull things out. So I'm building up an earplug, just wiggling it around and shift to smooth it out. We don't want to create any sharp edges, something unnatural. Okay, this looks very good. I mean, I, I managed to not make any sharp things sticking out. And let's say that this is this is a way I want to see my earplug. It doesn't matter because we're not going to listen to the result. And it's not a natural ear anyway. This was the check the ear canal part. We want to make it look something like this without the wire. Uh, we can go to mask, clear mask, to get rid of everything I was masking. Now I would actually do the duplicate of this. The way I do it is I go back to 3D view when it's selected, press Shift D. When the mouse is on in a 3D view, now press the right mouse button to reset the movement of it. So now it is back in the exact location where you started. Now I hide one version. Now I will have one reference and one which I'm going to continue working on because the next step is to get rid of everything which is not there. To get rid of a hair, get rid of a hat and any other things which stick out. So this is an exercise in sculpting. I am not really good at sculpting, but uh, let's see. First we're going to use a smoothing tool and just run over the parts which the obvious parts. We have a seam between the detail mesh and uh, base mesh. So if we run over it, as you can see, we can smooth it out quite nicely. And that's also the reason why I wanted to keep the piece of a cheek from the detailed mesh, because uh, that's a part which is quite important for the incoming sound from the front, while things here at the bottom are not as important. So this is good enough. I'm just going to run over the rest. I'm going to increase by pressing F, increase the tool size. So I'm actually increasing radius. If you want to increase basically the fall off, shift F to change the fall off. Okay. It looks like it's doing the right thing already. So I don't need to change any settings. Just going to run over so that we don't have any unnatural. Actually, what I'm doing right now is completely useless because when we're going to remesh it, all of these small details are going to disappear. But uh, here, when I have a line F to scale it down, here we're actually merged detail and base mesh. That's what I do want to smooth it out. So now when I got it smoothed out and it looks reasonably good, we need to get rid of the hair. And here the tool I think works well is scraping. Scrape. 
I'm going to change the fall off. And uh, increase the strength a little bit. And let's see what it does. You basically are chiseling away some parts. Like here, from reference geometry, I had a piece. I just got rid of it. So what you see right now is going to be a bit of an art process. You can see that, okay, when we get close to the ear, you have to be very careful. Uh -huh. It affects the ear, so we undo this. If it starts to affect the ear, then we do need to do some masking. And here in the box mask, if you hold it down, you can select lasso mask. Lasso mask is what it says. Everything which is selected by lasso is no longer affected by sculpting. It's a bit tricky to apply it. Like this. You can always Shift or Control select to get rid of things you accidentally selected but you don't want. Oh, and it selects on both sides at the same time. That's a bit of a trick. Okay, I got lucky and I selected the right things. But... Uh, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna select everything And now we do shift, no, control. So control select sh should deselect things. Yep. Control lasso. Oh, and I deselected something on this side as well. Okay, tricky, 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 but I can also paint that afterwards. The good thing about lasso selecting everything is that something inside the ear, which you don't really see, will be selected as well. Shift, middle mouse to drag. Okay. I'm going to take painting, mask, and do some extra painting. Perhaps moving out the border is a good thing, but not real necessary. So painting applies only to a, to the surface you you paint, not through everything, which makes it a bit easier to handle. Okay, I think this is good. For the painting, you can actually change a brush. Here under Tools, you can see some more settings. I think the same settings are also visible here under Tool. But anyway, you don't really need to know much about it to get things done. So now when we have masked the really important parts, everything else, we don't care if we get it slightly off because there might be some hair deforming the shape anyway. I'll press Ctrl S to save. Now I'm going to go back to the scrape tool and uh, do some scraping. I like this tool. I think it works quite intuitively. Here we might actually use something like deflate maybe. Control to deflate. 
Huh? It works. And shift to smooth. I don't want to smooth this before I scrape it because it's easier to see what are you doing. Like, what was it? So we see that it was caused by the hat. So we can scrape it off. If you would have hair, it would be the same exact thing. You would simply have some some surface which sticks out, which clearly is not how the skin goes. So you just scrape it until you get something which resembles your actual skin surface. As this is a tutorial, of course, nobody cares how well I do this. This dummy will not complain about the sound quality of its sofa file. But uh, you get the idea how much work it is to clean it up from a hat. If you would have hair, it would be the same thing, only, only you would have even... Yeah, it depends. You really don't want to edit curly hair afterwards. But you can work with haircuts as well. I tried. Take some extra work. If you can convince people to shave their head in the name of good acoustics, you see why it would be useful. So you see, because I masked some areas like ears, I'm not as concerned about damaging the ears. But you can still do some damage behind the ear if you are not careful. And because I didn't smooth, I see quite well where I need to scrape some more. So again, does this have to be perfect? No, it doesn't. We just want to make it slightly nicer. And certainly you don't want some unnatural things sticking out. Here I masked too much, which is actually a bad thing. So you can see what happened. It scraped everything above this line, but it did not edit this part, which it should have, or which would need some scraping, but it didn't apply to it. So if we scrape some more, we should... Okay, I'll just call it good enough. I'll take shift to smooth, and I smooth the rest a bit. Okay, here on top we have some really ugly things. So I scrape that some more. Right, on top it was ugly because I didn't scan it very well. Which means there was a, both a hole and also the surface around the hole were also not very high precision. One thing with such filled in holes is their resolution might be lower and then when you're going to try to smooth it it may cause a problem. You can see that on top of a head here it's almost transparent because here we have very big triangles but if you look like this you can't see through because the mesh is much finer. That means this part is quite difficult to smooth in Blender. Unfortunately, so you would need to actually re-mesh this to get it easy to smooth like the rest of the head. And there is a remeshing 
option here, but I don't want to use it at the moment unless I have to. Let's scrape here a bit. I don't want to use it because it will remesh everything and I would I would try to remesh it as little as possible. But it's up to you, you can easily do that. So anyway, you would need to continue working here until you are happy. You can change different settings, but for this tutorial it's good enough. I have scraped what I wanted. I have some things left here, but before I go there, I press Ctrl S to save and I remove a mask. Clear mask. So now I can work on these last bits. Shift and smooth. Just be careful not to deform the ear. And as you can see, when you try to smooth it, it gets done quite well. We'll smooth some more here, smooth some more here. Blend together the scraped part and the seam which was masked off. If the tool is too small, you can use again F to change the size. Oh, right now it's scraping. Let me switch to smooth tool. This will stop me from scraping unnecessary. Again. You would do this very nicely because you care. For tutorial, I just show you a principle. Here we have a bit of a defect, which is natural. You always will have some interaction between scraping and, uh, and the ear. So we smoothed out that. This. And you should fix up some obviously bad things. Can look down here around the ear. Okay, so we have some slight issue here. I'll use a draw tool with a smaller brush and control to push it away. I don't know, looks. Looks quite good to me. Again, this part is not that important. I think everybody understands. We go smooth. And we smooth away the things which are really weird. Okay, as soon as I start smoothing here, it grows. But that's not much of an issue anyway. But we do want to smooth out here behind the ear if possible. Okay, it's a bit okay. If you rub it long enough, it gets smooth. And in this area, I'll even take the pinch. Let's try a pinch. Okay, no, pinch doesn't look good. Sharp. Sharp looks good. I like sharp. And I apply some smoothing. Cut in sharp and smooth. Undo. 
So you get the point. You can play with it until you are happy. Sculpting is not my strength, but you basically need some of it. Let's take a look, zoom out. I would say this is very good. You don't really need to worry about more details in this. Here, this spot I don't like. So zoom in, oops, wrong tool, smooth. And rub it long enough until we don't see anything. must be a really big defect there that it takes so much rubbing. Sometimes you don't see on the surface, but it may go very deep in. Um, okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. Here, I guess I should. Yes. You see some signs of a hat still around. You can either rub it long enough with smoothing or perhaps use some scraping. Okay, but I think uh, this is what I wanted, but notice we have a big hole at the bottom. So we go to 3D view, save it, and uh, press tab to go into edit mode. Wait a little bit, because it's a big file. Everything is selected. Uh -huh. So I click somewhere else, so it deselected it. I am in face select mode, but I want edges. It's two on a keyboard. Now I press Alt and click on the edge. Hopefully it registered the correct edge. Yes, it did. So I selected the whole bottom edge. And now I should do under face grid fill. Let's try if it works. Yeah, that's good. So we filled in the main hole, which was left after mesh reconstruction, which merged the ears in. And just to be nice, we'll go into Sculpting and smooth out a little bit this area. It's not really important, but why not? It's just going to be nicer. So the bottom of the head really is not that big deal. You can have a straight cut. If you want, you can also have uh, shoulders included but I would recommend to actually go without shoulders so I think this is perfectly good mesh for simulation before you say you are done you need to make sure that it's actually correct valid mesh is it airtight? So I just closed the big hole. The rest should have been already closed when we merge it together. Scale check. Because I used iPhone and I did not use scaling tools anywhere, it should be all good. By iPhone, I mean that the Face ID sensor provides correct dimensions to the object you are scanning surface smoothness checks. This is something you can't do in Blender, at least I don't know how, but you can do it both in MeshLab and MeshMixer and even in the tools which come together with HRTF, a mesh grading tool. We'll use that in the next tutorial. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to assume we're done and the next tutorial we're going to start from here because irrespective if you did this what I just did now, or you got the perfect 3D mesh to begin with. The next step is going to be all about optimization 
and uh, whichever errors we're going to encounter, we're going to fix them as we run into them. So thank you for watching for this video and uh, let's jump right in into the optimization tutorial.